Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and I'll be taking you through today's match. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video or subscribing if you haven't yet. We'd also like to remind you guys to try and support your local game stores by buying MTG products there. Remember to help keeping your stores alive. Finally, because of the pandemic, we will not be able to show you quality paper magic for some time. Instead, we will be recording some cool digital gameplay giving it the same editing and interface we have for our regular videos. This week we're bringing you brand new Ikoria Commanders. I am piloting a grindy Calcian, Luis Brandão with Riel, David with a resilient version of Combo Kinan, and finally Bal with a value cycling Gavi. Let's check our starting hands. David is going first this week. His hand has all the tools he needs to attempt an early win. Mystical Tutor can get him a Transmute Artifact for a Basalt Monolith. Worldly Tutor can get him an infinite mana outlet like Thrasios or Walking Ballista. Simic Signet, he has a mental misstep for protection or to stop cards that affect the game's flow in someone else's favor. Finally, he has three lands. Breeding Pool, Snow-Covered Forest and a Polluted Delta. Bal's hand is slightly risky. His only land, Rawgrim Triome, enters the battlefield tapped, meaning he could miss out on the right timing for Mystic Remora. However, he should still be able to get a Sol Ring into an Azorius Signa turn 2 if he doesn't draw a land, and he has Rescind and Brand to cycle and filter his draw. Lightning Rift should prove invaluable as a way to deal with creatures. I mulliganed once and got a decent hand. Fatty Heath and City of Brass cover my colors, and Horja of Signet is decent enough ramp. The rest of my hand covers a bit of everything. Vampiric Tutor can get me solutions or combo pieces, Knight's Whisper is solid card draw, and both Deafening Silence and Containment Breeze allow me to hate on the board a bit. Louise's hand is a tad slow due to having no ramp or card draw. Baral does act somewhat as ramp though. He has Pyroblast for interaction, Magos of the Moon to hate on the other player's mana base, and Underworld Reach to either combo out or storm out of his wheels and card draw. His lands are Polluted Delta, Island, and Command Tower. Time to get this show going! David's start is pretty conservative. He plays a Polluted Delta and passes. Bob makes me cry a bit about turn order as he plays a Cephalid Coliseum into Sol Ring, taking one damage. We pass priority to David, who asks for a second before saying, go on. He follows it up with an Azorius Signet and lets me get to my turn. Now that I'm playing, I do the responsible thing. I put a City of Brass in play and take one damage to cast Deafening Silence. Once again, David asks for a second, but things do move on. We wager it's either a Spell Pierce or a Mental Misstep, or a godlike poker game. I pass to Luigi. Luigi plays his own Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He casts a Mana Crypt and we all think it'll stop there. But no, he goes on and casts a Magus of the Moon. David responds and cracks his Polluted Delta for a snow-covered island. We all wonder if Luis has any hate in his heart for choosing that play as he goes to his hand step. David casts a Mystical Tutor for a Transmute Artifact ringing all of our alarms. Going to his turn, David plays a snow-covered forest and casts a Simic Signet which can be sacrificed to Transmute Artifact. This means he just needs a colorless mana outlet in his hand to win the game with Kinan and Basalt Monolith. He passes to Baal. Baal plays a mountainous Rawgrim Triome. He uses it to filter mana through his signet and casts a Mystic Remora. David finally reveals his counterspell, a mental misstep, stopping Baal from just sitting back and drawing cards. Having played his non-creature spell of the turn, Baal passes to me. I play a mountainous Fetid Heath. Since everyone is filtering their mana with a signet, I do the same, casting my Orge of Signet and passing the turn to Luis. Luis wins the Crypt Roll. He plays a snow-covered island and attacks David because he's the closest to winning. He does the responsible thing and passes the turn fully untapped. David plays a snow-covered island. He thinks for a bit, but probably does not have an outlet, so he decides not to draw any hate and simply passes his turn to Baal. Baal plays a mountainous sacred foundry. He casts lightning rift, which, incidentally, can kill mine and David's commanders as well as the magas of the moon. He passes the turn to me. On my turn, I would miss a land drop, so I choose to cast Faithless Looting. My draws are pretty nice, and I'm forced to discard an Arcane Signet and a Knight's Whisper. I play a Mountainous Wooded Foothills and choose to pass the turn without casting Calcium. I have instant speed interaction and I have no idea if Baal will decide to kill my commander just because he can. 
on my aunt's step, Luis casts a mystical tutor. David responds and casts a worldly tutor for a walking ballista. There's his outlet. Luis gets himself a burning inquiry, hoping to disrupt David's path to victory. Luis gets his positive mana crypt streak going. He plays a mountainous command tower and casts Riel. He follows it up with a burning inquiry. We all draw three cards and discard three at random. David does indeed discard the walking ballista, which is a victory for all of us. Riel draws Luis three additional cards. He then lets David go to his turn. A bit annoyed at the odds game, David plays a mountainous academy ruins. He then decides to cast Kinnon, making us wonder if he has a way to kill the Magus and use the ruins to get back his ballista and win. He passes to Baal. Baal plays a mountainous plateau. He casts his commander, Gavi, and cycles a rescind, triggering the lightning rift and mercilessly killing David's Kinnon. He draws a card, triggering Gavi and getting himself a dinosaur cat token. Going to his hand step, I flash in a containment priest. On my turn, I draw and cast a Soul Ring. Then, I cast my commander, Calcian, just in case we need to take down the Riel with Baal's Lightning Rift and Calcian's Ping. I go to combat and attack David before passing. Luis just keeps on winning his crit rolls. He casts his turn's non-creature spell, Preordain. He seems severely stuck because of my deafening silence. Both top cards go to the bottom of Luis's library and he draws one before going to combat. He hits David for 7 damage. On his second main phase, Luis casts a Goblin Engineer and fetches himself a Lion's Eye Diamond. This is effectively a self-wheel with Riel. He passes. David isn't too happy about having lost his infinite mana outlet and commander in the same turn cycle while people are attacking him. But such is the way of the Simic. He plays a Sylvan Carry at it and passes. Magus of the Moon is tying up Baal's mana, so now that it's his turn he decides to remove it. Baal cycles for Sick the Worldly and pays for the Lightning Rift trigger, killing the Magus. I respond, figuring I can get a free experience counter and ping the Magus with Calcian. Baal surprises all of us by casting a Trick Bind on my Calcian ping. I ask why he didn't save it for Riel's next trigger or something more relevant, especially considering he freed our, our colored lands and could cast something else and he replies that he wants to keep Calcian manageable through the Lightning Rift. Yavi triggers and Baal gets his second token. Because I'm not sure if Baal will decide to do something like what just happened again, I decide to cast Vampiric Tutor on Baal's end step. I get a Deflecting Swat, which I can use to protect Calcian or to stop major shenanigans from taking place if necessary. On my turn, I crack my foothills for a basic mountain just because I'm afraid of a possible back to basics from either Luigi or David. I then cast a Limvala, Keeper of Silence, attempting to cast David's and Luis's resources shorter. David thinks for a bit and decides to cast Force of Will in response, exiling Blue Sun Zenith. It resolves, leaving him with a single card in his hand, Transmute Artifact. He did this because his deck has a harder time dealing with creatures than other decks. Calcian attacks Luis. I cast Umezawa's Jite to try and find another way to make Calcian relevant and pass my turn. Luis breaks his mana crypt run, taking 3 damage. He casts a main phase brainstorm to dig for a way to improve his position. He then casts a Gildendrake. His idea is to force the initiative of killing either the Engineer or Riel on us, giving him the chance to respond and instant speed activate the LED and draw the cards anyway. He decides to try and take Boss Commander just because it triggers on extra draws and could help Luis build a board. Baal responds and wizard cycles of Dalkan Aethermage, finding himself a nimble obstructionist. He pays 1 to activate the Lightning Rift and damage Riel so that we can kill her on his hand step. Baal then pays mana to cycle the obstructionist, countering the Gilded Drake trigger and keeping his commander. Luis then goes to combat and attacks the Vith for 6 commander damage. On Luis's end step, I tap Calcian to kill Riel. Luis thinks it's unlikely the Engineer will survive another turn cycle and responds by activating it, sacrificing his Crypt. I consider using the Deflecting Swat and forcing the ability to bring back Mana Crypt instead, but ultimately decide that him wheeling himself and losing 3 mana plus the Crypt is already sufficiently punishing. Luis gets the LED and sacrifices it, discarding Anger, Pact of Negation, Misdirection, Underworld Breach and Anya's Ravager to Exile so we can then cast it for its madness cost. He draws 5 cards from the Real trigger. Real dies, but the replacement effect to put it into the command zone prevents me from getting an experience counter which is pretty feels bad. We go to David's turn. David draws and plays a Tropical Island. With one card in hand and Lightning Rift threatening to kill his commander, he's forced to pass. 
On his turn, Balkas and Nahiri the Arbinger, which is a good way for him to get some more Gavi tokens while looking for better cards. He activates her and discards a Shivan Reef, triggering Gavi and spawning another cute but lethal token. Ball passes to me. On my turn, I equip Calcian with a Jite and go to combat, attacking David. I get some much needed Jite counters to protect Calcian from the Lightning Rift and pass the turn. Luis starts his turn desperate for better cards and a land. He casts Goblin Lore even without Riel to make the discarding better. He discards Memory Jar, Careful Study and the Cephalid Colosseum he just drew, effectively losing that turn's land drop. RNG is not on his side. He goes to combat, attacking the Nahiri with the Gilded Drake and the Vid with Anya's Ravager which is forced to attack. He discards his hand. Luis draws 3 cards from the trigger and plays a snow-covered mountain. There's his land. He goes to his end step and David uses his academy ruins to get his walking ballista back to the top of his library so that he's able to have a solid creature to deal with some of the board's BS and protect himself. On his turn, David does exactly what he promised and plays a ballista with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. He goes to his end step and Bal cycles a Radiance Judgment to hit my commander and force me to lose GT counters. I respawn and cycle a Void Beckoner, letting Bal get a second Rift Trigger, which once again goes to my commander. Unsure of what's happening, I remove a counter from the GT to give Calcian plus 2 plus 2. Then, I tap Calcian to ping the Goblin Engineer and kill it with a Death Touch, gaining an experience counter and making Calcian a 5-5, fully able to survive the Rift's damage. Bal asks David if he wants to use the Ballista to ping my commander for lethal, so I have to choose to use my GT again but David would much rather keep his wincon on the table and out of Lightning Rift's reach. With that, we go to Bal's turn. On his turn, Bal chooses to use Nahiri's Minus ability to try and remove my Death Touch Calcian. I sigh and use this opportunity to cast Deflecting Swat and redirect Nahiri's ability to David's tapped Simic Signet, thereby removing his Transmute Artifact's target. He then casts a second Planeswalker for his cats to defend, the Ready Scrap Savant. He uses him to discard a Fluctuator and a Mental Misstep, drawing true cards and increasing his Dinosaur Cat army to 4. He chooses to try and protect his Planeswalkers, passing the turn. On my turn, I draw and play a much needed Tome of Legends to finally start drawing cards. It enters the battlefield with a page counter. I go to combat and attack Luigi with Calcian, mostly because I don't have GTA counters to protect Calcian from both David's Ballista and Ball's Lightning Rift. The Tome gains a page, and Luis takes the damage, which increases the GT counters to 3. I go to my end step, and Bal cycles a Lingering Mirage. He triggers his Lightning Rift and decides that me having one less creature to equip outweighs the Priest's role in preventing creatures being cheated into play. The Priest dies. On his turn, Luis casts a Gamble, discarding a Goblin Welder. Well, that was basically an Intomb, right? He plays a Bloodstained Mire. Before going to combat, I decide to kill his Ravager with Calcium's Death Touch just because I don't want him to keep drawing 3 new cards each turn cycle. I gain an additional experience counter. Luis passes the turn. David draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs, meaning he still only has the Transmute Artifact in his hand. He laughs at the fact that his only good draws were from his tutors and the Ruins activation before passing. Balan taps and plays a recently drawn Curator of Mysteries, which will make all his cycling and Planeswalker draws incredibly better. He immediately uses Nahiri, discarding a Hallowed Fountain. Bal cries and puts the card into his library, drawing one and triggering Gavi for an additional token. Then, he casts a Cursed Totem, making me and David grunt audibly. David responds by making his Ballista bigger, but doesn't use the pings in any way. Finally, Bal uses the Dereti and discards an Akrama's Vengeance. He didn't choose to cast it and protect his walkers, mostly because Luis has Hangar in his graveyard and could just as easily attack for 10 plus with Riel. He scries the top and passes to me without attacking. On his hand step, I activate the Tome to draw a card. On my turn, I decide to immediately move to combat and attack the Dereti, mostly because Luis didn't choose to keep Bal's walkers in check. The Tome triggers. Bal considers blocking to kill my commander, but because it has Death Touch, he wouldn't have a very efficient block, and in his head, he kept thinking Calcium was worded like Sangir Vampire, and even a Chump block would give him more experience counters. So, he simply lets me hit the Dereti. I remove all GT counters and kill it, gaining two more. On my second main phase, I remove a counter from the Tome to draw a card. I play a Rugged Prairie. Then, I cast a Heliot Sun Crown and pass a turn, hoping someone deals with the Cursed Totem for me. Luis draws and goes to his end step, exhausted. David cracks the Catacombs. 
he writes a new page into our Mitra Club by getting a snow cover island. But the game is on turn 8 and we'd miss this completely. David draws and also passes the turn. Well, he probably didn't get a land this time. Bao says he's concerned about my board state and wants to deal with it, which I'm not sure what he means. He activates the Cephalid Colosseum, drawing 3 cards and discarding another 3. This triggers his Sphinx 3 times. He discards 2 lands and a Glint Horn Buccaneer, possibly because of the Jite. Gavi triggers and adds another baby to the nest. He sent all cards to the bottom with the Curator, following that with an activation of Nahiri. Chandra Flamecaller gets discarded, Bals cries and keeps the card, drawing it. He plays an Astral Slide, drawing a sigh from me as I look towards my hand to figure out my next play. Bal passes without attacking. On my turn, I draw and play a Basic Swamp. I attack Luigi because, once again, I want to save my GTA counters for David's commander if necessary. Tome of Legends triggers. On my second main phase, I draw from the Tome and cast a Grim Tutor, fetching for an Emrakul the Promised End. I have enough mana to cast it on the next turn and I need to try and deal with Bal's incessant focus on what I'm doing. Because I still have mana to spare, I cast a Harsh Mentor and pass my turn. Luis's board isn't looking any merrier. He casts a Felwar Stone and passes. David, however, has something to do as he uses a Noxious Revival to get back his Mystical Tutor onto the top of his library. We have guessed that he intends to fetch a Cyclonic Rift later on, even if he's missing the mana to use it. David draws the Mystical Tutor and, quite understandably, passes. Bal goes to his turn. He starts by cycling a Sensor. He uses the Astral Rift trigger to exile my commander and the Lightning Rift trigger to kill my Harsh Mentor, which was a glorified blocker. The Sphinx triggers and Bal checks the top card of his library and sends it to the bottom. Gavi triggers for another cat. Those are starting to look pretty scary. Bal then activates the Nahiri and discards the Polluted Delta. He keeps the top card, drawing it. Bal attacks me for 10 damage, hurting my life points as much as my feelings, and passes. Calcium returns, no longer with a Death Touch counter on it. I get to my turn and I'm even more happy with my Grim Tutor now. I cast Emrakul the Promised End, targeting Bal to try and defuse some of that board that keeps getting aimed at me. I try to go to combat and Bal cycles a cloud of fairies attempting to bounce Louise's Gilded Drake, possibly so that Louise is the one with the 1313 that can kill other players while at the same time removing a cycling card from his hand. I'm forced to respond with a Jite, killing Louise's Drake. I go to combat and attack David before passing. Luis plays a snow-covered mountain. He casts a Mox Opal and considers casting his commander but decides to go to his hand step instead. David casts Mystical Tutor and goes for Finale of Devastation. This is because he didn't have enough mana for a Rift and I could be using Bal's turn to end him. Now that he's playing, David casts the Finale for 4. I respond and remove a counter from the Jite just in case it's something like a Collector Roof, even though the card might stop David's own deck from winning. I gain 2 life, Helio triggers, and I put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Calcian. David gets himself a Nerza. Urza triggers, giving him a construct. That's a bunch of blockers. David passes the turn to Ball. I control Ball's turn. I'm fortunate enough to instantly draw a card with cycling, not needing to search for it. I cycle the card, blinking David's ballista so it dies on the end of turn, and paying for the rift to kill one of Ball's dinosaurs, just so that they don't come bite me in the ass later. I scry and send the card to the bottom, drawing one. Gavi triggers and I get another token with summoning sickness. I go to combat, I attack me with Gavi and the Sphinx and David with the six dinosaurs, and activate the Jite again to kill David's construct. Emrakul and Calcium kill both creatures, putting them in Baal's graveyard, and David takes eight damage. On Baal's second main phase, I use Nahiri to exile the Astral Slide. I also play a Prismatic Vista, crack it, and fail to find a land and cast Curiosity on the Urza. I pass to Ball. Hopefully, I dealt enough damage for things to simmer down. On his turn, Ball plays a Command Tower. He activates Nahiri. He discards a Fierce Guardianship, which was in his hand when I control his turn, and he casts a Lay Claim on my Emrakul. Guess Ball also gets to be lucky. He attacks me with 12 tokens. I block one and take another blow for 10 damage. Ouch! Maybe I didn't manage to defuse him after all. Bal comments on how he'll kill me next turn and I ask him why exactly he's not using the flying 1313 to his advantage. On his hand step, I remove a counter from the tome and draw a card. Now that I'm playing, I equip Jite and go to combat attacking David. I activate Heliot to gain more life and put a counter on my Calcian. 
I draw a card with the tome again, play a basic planes, and cast Mind Blade Render as my blocker. At this point and during his turn, Luis is low-key asking us to end his misery, pointing at my deafening silence. He cracks his bloodstained mire for a snow-covered mountain. He then casts an Imperial Recruiter, getting himself a Jesus Archivist with haste before passing. David draws and plays a carpet of flowers. He uses the mana to cast his Kinnan, perhaps hoping he gets a way to deal with the Cursed Totem and win the next turn cycle. He passes. Baal starts his turn by activating the Nahiri, threatening her ultimate next turn. None of us is really sure what he might have in mind though. He discards the basic island. He goes to combat and attacks only Luigi with Emrakul, not attacking me so I don't gain any more life with Heliod and Ajite. Luis thinks for a bit, but lets it slide. Baal goes to his handstep. I activate the Jite to kill Luis's Archivist, Luis responds and activates it. David responds and uses the Academy Ruins to recover his Walking Ballista. Baal also responds and uses Mystical Tutor. He now realizes that he forgot to add Cyclonic Rift to his deck, which isn't ideal. He instead gets an Aura Extraction to deal with my Heliod and some of my life gain in the process. I cast Enlightened Tutor during Baal's end step to check my library for something that's even remotely good. Because I don't know what people have and I'm exhausted from the entire game's focus on me, I simply decide not to get anything, effectively blowing a tutor and one life over nothing. I get to my turn. Now that I'm playing, I attack Luis with both creatures just because I was sure I could draw a card from it. He blocks the bigger creature and I activate Heliod to gain life from it and put a plus one plus one counter on Kelsian. I lose one and draw from the Mind Blade Render. I play and crack a fetch to bait Baal into using his Aura Extraction. Now I can cast Hide on his Lay Claim without Baal being able to counter my spell thanks to Deafening Silence. Emrakul is back to her owner. I draw a card with my Tome of Legends and cast a freshly drawn Stone Forge Mystic which I use to fetch myself a Sword of Truth and Justice. With a fairly decent rebuild, I pass my turn side glancing that Nahiri. Luis's turn remains unexciting, despite him having a great commander. He casts an Arcane Signet and passes. This wasn't a very fun game for him so far. On David's turn, we get some flashbacks as he recasts Walking Ballista as a 4-4 creature. He passes to Baal, who uses David's Ancept to cycle Lay Waste to kill my Stone Forge Mystic and Flourishing Fox to kill David's Kinan. Double kill. Baal goes to his turn and plays a Cascade Bluffs. He gets Nahiri down to 1, making us wonder if he has a game-breaking artifact hand. He gets a Kozilek Butcher of Truth instead. Oh boy, things aren't looking good. Baal attacks me with Kozilek triggering the Annihilator. I sacrifice Deafening Silence, Soul Ring and two basic planes and I also take the 12 damage. He goes to his second main phase and plays a Mana Vault. On his hand step, Baal returns the Kozilek back to his hand, clearly stating what he aims to do the turn after this one. Cast it. On my turn, I try to cast the Sword and Baal counters it with Neutral Eyes. With that out of the way, I attack Baal with Emrakul and Luigi with the other two guys. Luis isn't very happy about this attack, to be honest. I get counters on the Jite and the Tome. On my second main phase, I lose one life and draw a card from Mind Blade Render. I draw exactly what I needed, even if it might kill me. A Mana Crypt. I use it to cast a Nuba Mask so that Baal can't use his cycling spells or make good use of the Kozilek draws. I pass the turn. Not at all amused by my attack, Luis goes to his turn, exiles and plays the basic Snow Island with Uba Mask and casts his commander. He immediately attacks me because of anger in his graveyard and in his heart. Considering that if David also chooses to attack me I could die in the next turn cycle, I'm forced to block with Kelsian to gain two additional counters with Jitte and prevent this damage. Both Riel and Kelsian die and it's David's turn. David exiles the Court of Calling. He casts it with the Carpet of Flowers and finds himself a Spellseeker. The Spellseeker in turn picks up a Cyclonic Rift. At this point some of us actually do welcome the Rift. David passes the turn. Baal goes to his turn and exiles and plays a Nash Barrens. He then casts Kozilek, exiling Astral Drift, Volcanic Island, Whirlwind of Thought and Arcane Signet. He hupticks Nahiri. Then he attacks me for 12 and I respond and use the Jite to gain 8 life, going down to 4. He casts the Arcane Signet and passes. On my upkeep, I shudder as I roll the Crypt. I win the roll. Then I exile and play a Basic Planes. I cast the Commander and the Tome triggers. I equip it with the Jite. I attack David with Kelsian and Baal with the Emrakul, fully aware that his next combat might not be pretty for my side. David chump blocks with the Spellseeker and I gain two counters with the Jite. I pass the turn. Luis reveals a Ponder on his turn. 
No longer impeded by the deafening silence, he casts it. He shuffles and exiles a Wheel of Fortune. He plays an untapped steam vent, losing two life. He then casts Riel, followed by the wheel. Brandon also wanted to ride a page in our Mitra Club. He only paid two mana for the wheel. However, it didn't affect the outcome of the game. David responds and casts the Rift on Baal's Cursed Totem, looking to trade his Transmute artifact for the ability to have his commander and Ballista fully operational. We all discard our hand and exile seven cards to the Uba Mask. Luis doesn't find anything relevant, so he casts a Sensei's Divining Top. He attacks Baal with Riel, because this way the Eldrazi goes away and Baal can still use Nahiri to take out my own Eldrazi. Before blocking, Baal casts Clear on David's carpet, asking that he'd swan song it for the lols. But of course, David simply dispels it and Baal is forced to block with the Kozilek. Kozilek goes to the graveyard, triggering and shuffling himself and everything else back to his library. Because Gavi is moving to a new zone, Baal chooses to return his commander back to the command zone. It is now David's turn. He exiles an intuition for the Uba Mask and casts it for an Eternal Witness, a Freed from the Real, and a Basalt Monolith. We give him the Monolith just because it's harder to interact with the Freed from the Real on his Sylvan Caryatid, and he can always get the Monolith back with the Academy Ruins to secure two outlets. David doesn't have enough mana to win this turn over my Jite, so he just casts the Monolith and passes. Balan taps his Mana Vault and exiles a Curiosity to the Uba Mask. I try to convince him to let Emrakul survive the next turn cycle so I can deal with the vid for sure, but Baal doesn't want to risk it. The giant spaghetti monster gets exiled for good. Baal plays a curiosity on one of his cat dinosaurs to try and draw a card instead of trying to kill the vid. He attacks Luis for lethal. I respond and remove a counter from the GT plus ping the dinosaur with calcium to kill the one creature that has the curiosity on it. Luis is hanging by one life. Does this mean he's going to win? I gain one experience counter. Baal questions my play, we agree to disagree, and Baal casts his commander before passing. On my turn, the Crypt decides to stab my back and hit me in the face. Wait, what? Now, let's go back a few turns. Remember here where Sakaira drew a card with his stone? He actually forgot to take out one point of life from the City of Brass, and the rest of the game was played out as if he had one more HP. Now, in this specific case, he still had GT counters to play around that, but the rest of the outcome could be slightly different, as you will see. So, for the sake of simplicity, let's assume he's at one life, as he did during the game. I draw and exile Flawless Maneuver with Uba Mask. I attack David with my Kelsian, and he blocks with the Carry added, generating mana just for the giggles. We're all dangerously low on life now. I gain GTA counters and a Page counter on my Tome. I activate it and exile a Bitter Ordeal. Meh. I flashback Faithless Looting, exiling two cards and discarding none. I cry when I find a Queen Marchesa and a Sacred Foundry, I cast the Queen, becoming the Monarch, and play the Foundry tapped. On my end step, I exile a Cut the Ribbons to the Monarch trigger. Goodbye. Luigi goes to his turn and finds an Electro Dominance with Uba Mask. He cries Sweet Release as he tries to cast it to kill David, who is forced to respond and ping Luis instead. Luis has accomplished the so desired Harakiri. Things are now pretty close to ending. David exiles a Cavern of Souls, which he plays. He then tries to cast Kinan, forcing me to act. I remove a counter from the Jite to give the Ballista minus one minus one. David responds and pings me. I respond and remove another counter to gain life. David responds again with another ping. I respond again and tap Calcian to deal one damage to the Ballista. David pings me yet again, killing his Ballista and forcing me to remove another Jite counter to gain two life. I gain six and lose three, meaning I go to four life, which, once again, is not ideal. Kinan enters the battlefield and David can win the next turn. Balan taps and pays to untap his mana vault. He exiles a polluted delta to the Uba Mask. He then sacrifices his fire isle to draw, exiling a rebuild which he can't use efficiently. Bal upticks the Nahiri and is forced to pass to my turn. If he chose to kill David, then I might be able to recover thanks to the Jite. If he killed me instead, David would win the next turn. On my upkeep, I pray to all gods that I survive the crypt roll. Unfortunately, I take the damage. I then exile a Swamp to the Uber Mask. I use the Tome of Legends and exile an Anguish Unmaking. Not the best removal right now, to be honest. I am now forced to attack the video with both the Queen and Calcian, knowing that Baal has enough damage to deal lethal on his next combat. David blocks Kelsian, but he makes infinite mana with his Basalt Monolith before dying, just to prove a point. I pass to Baal. Baal exiles and casts a Tectonic Reformation before going to combat. He attacks with everything and, regardless of the Jite, I'm dead me. Cycle Deck wins the game.
Thanks for following us through this match, everyone. Boy, this was the grindiest one we've had so far. Six hours of gameplay, 17 turns in, and all of us clinging to dear life. To be honest, we all want the turn 3 combos to come back. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Carneiro, Troy, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, and Ajimo, our stockbreakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video or subscribing. Our last giveaway has already been received by Stefan. Congratulations! We will announce a new giveaway once we reach the 4000 subscribers. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Come join us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you then!